God. I give God all the glory this wonderful evening. He is our good Lord. And again, we are here at Nyokonyo Studios, ready to share the word of God with you. Men of God are around here with me. And I thank God because of today, for I know that the devil has no chance in our lives in Jesus' name. As the man of God, last week on Wednesday, spoke to the angel of God in the church of Theatira. It was all about the tolerant church. And I know that today, he's going again to affirm the same, same word to us about the tolerant church. Kwa wale ambao walisikia juma tano iliyopita ninaamini kwamba ilikuwa ni siku ya baraka ilikuwa ni siku ambayo tulisikiza neno ambalo haujawahi labda sikia katika maisha yako maana kitabu cha Revelation the book of Revelation ni kitabu kimoja ambacho watumishi wa Mungu wengi sana hawana ufunuo kukihusu maana ni kitabu cha ufunuo bila ufunuo wake huwezi ukahubiri tu na tumetunukiwa kuona mtumishi wa Mungu kwenye studio zetu ameweza kututembeza katika kitabu hicho katika kanisa la Sardis katika kanisa la la Philadelphia tukatembea kabisa na najua kwamba mwendo bado ni mrefu bado kuna makanisa ambayo Bwana anasungumza na kanisa ni wewe kanisa ni mimi kwa hivyo leo tuko tayari kupokea ujumbe ambao roho wa Mungu aliona kupitia Yohana katika kanisa la Theatira na Mungu akaweze kukubariki. So I'm your host Pastor Mary Nyokonyo of River of Life Christian Fellowship International Huruma. I welcome you to join us to our today's evening service. Get blessed and stay tuned. So you can also comment. You can also share with your friends in your platform. You can also share, you can send your comment, and if also you have a prayer request, send it. I have few people who have already sent their prayer requests, and we are going to pray, because since morning we have been praying here, and the man of God is going to pray, and also to our church members, we have our visions that we wrote last Sunday. Men of God are going to pray for the visions, for God to work out the answer in our visions as the book of Habakkuk says write down your vision hallelujah so I welcome you today we are praying for our visions wherever you are if you have a vision and you have wrote it down just lift it when the man of God will be praying for the visions and I know that your life is not going to be the same and your vision must come to pass it is not going to die because you are born to accomplish the purpose of God in you. Thank you. So join me as I join together with our fellow pastors, Pastor Harrison and also Pastor Johnston. We have missed you a lot, our brother Johnston. We are here to tell you Happy New Year. Hallelujah. He has said Happy New Year. So we missed him last Wednesday, I was here with Pastor Harrison, and I believe that people were blessed. So it's a happy new year if it's your first time to join us. Like Pastor John Stone, happy new year. May God bless you this year. It's a very purposeful year for us here at Nyokonyo Studios. God bless you. As I welcome the men of God to introduce themselves. Perhaps it's your first time to join our platform today. We are on YouTube and also Facebook. You can find us live. Mary Nyokonyo Official. Talk to your people. Tell one, tell two. Let them tune in and get blessed. This is a different place whereby we don't, do not tolerate sin. So God is here to minister to you. Welcome, men of God. Introduce yourselves, and again, you can open with a word of prayer, Pastor Harrison, and God is going to bless us. Shalom. Thank you very much, all the viewers of today. I want to take this opportunity to welcome you uh, for our evening service. The Lord has made this day to be very uh, grateful and successful unto us. That is why we are here 
ready to present the gospel of the kingdom unto you this evening. Uh, next to me is uh, Pastor Johnston, and uh, I believe as we go to share this word, the Spirit of God will unite us in one accord so that we can all be blessed. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Jehovah, for this day. We give you praise and glory for this wonderful day. We surrender to you. We surrender our will, our mind, our soul and body to you, Jehovah. We seek you, Lord, to guide us, to be on our side as we continue to lift your name and share this word with your precious people. Lord, have your way and fulfill your purpose because you never send your word in vain. Thank you because victory belongs to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Uh, I want to uh, begin by saying again, thank you very much for tuning in. It's a privilege and honor to have you online. It's not that you don't have what to do. Uh, it proves to me that you value God so much and his word. The Bible says the world and everything in it shall be pass away. But the word of God will remain forever. So as you make Jesus number one, may he do you good. That everything you decide, may he meet your needs. Last week we were talking about the tolerant church. The tolerant church that uh, uh, the, the, the Lord Jesus himself when Jesus was giving this revelation of him to John to speak out there is a lot of deep things that Jesus himself had in mind and he passed through to John as a revelation to the church. So what we are reading here they are not words of John but the words of Jesus but given to John as a prophecy of the church. Remember we are talking about the churches uh, 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 in the book of uh, Revelation. And so last week we are dealing with the church of Theatira. And we saw as we had laid the foundation and then from there the electricity went off. But allow me to read uh, from verse chapter 2 of Revelation from verse 18. It says to the angel of the church in Theatira, right? These are the words of the Son of God talking about Jesus himself whose eyes are like a blazing fire ambaye macho yake kama and whose feet are like a burnished bronze. I know your deeds, your love and faith, your service and perseverance, and that you are now doing more than you did at first. Nayajua matendo yako na upendo na imani na huduma na subira yako tena kwamba matendo yako ya mwisho Ya yale ya kwanza. Nevertheless, I have this against you. Lakini, ninaneno juu yako. You tolerate 
that that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophet by her teaching she misleads my servants into sexual immorality and the eating of food sacrificed to idols lakini nina neno juu yako ya kwamba wamuridhi yule mwanamke Jezebeli yeye aliye yeye ajitaye nabii ajitaye nabii na kuwafundisha watumishi wangu na kuwapoteza ili wazini na kula vitu vilivyo uh, tolewa sadaka kwa sanamu i have given her time to repent of her immorality but she is unwilling uh, nami nimempa, nimempa muda ili atubu wala hataki kutubia azini wake verse 22 so i will cast her on a bed of suffering and i will make those who commit adultery with her suffer intensely unless they repent of her ways sasama nitamtupa juu ya kitanda na hao wazinio pamoja naye wapate dhiki kubwa wasio tubia matendo yake now you see what jesus christ gave to john to a uh, right as a revelation ivo unaona yale ambayo yesu anapeana kwa yohana ayanakili chini kama ufunuo and this is a revelation specifically to this church of theatira na huu ni ufunuo hasa kwa kanisa hili la theatira jesus commands them so well Yesu anawataja vizuri. He says I know your deeds. Anasema nafahamu matendo yenu. I understand your deeds. Nayajua matendo yenu. The works that you are doing as the church. Kazi mnayofanya kama kanisa. In other words the eyes of the Lord was upon these people. Kwa maneno mengine macho ya Bwana yalikuwa kwenye watu hawa. And again he was looking and seeing the things that were happening there in the church. Na pia alikuwa anatisama na kuona vitu ambavyo vilikuwa vinafanyika pale kanisani. They were hard working men. Walikuwa ni watu wenye bidii. They did a lot of work there. Walifanya kazi lo mingi pale. They were not just the men of faith but they mixed their faith with work. Hawakuwa tu watu wa imani nao walichanganya imani waliokuwa nayo na matendo. They were known for their actions. Hao walikuwa anafahamika kwa matendo not just their beliefs sio tu kwa kuamini but their actions lakini kwa matendo yao and so they did quite some things hivyo wakafanya vitu vilivyo vingi that made Jesus to comment through this prophecy yaliyomtuma Yesu kutaja kuhusu nabii huu and again the church at theatira na pia kat- Nisa la Tiatira in contrast to Ephesus church kilinganisha na kanisa la Efeso it had love for many people lilikuwa na upendo kwa watu wengi they were deeply rooted in the love of god and Wa- the love of other people walikuwa wamezama katika upendo wa Mungu na upendo wa watu wengine they didn't just love jehovah they also loved the people that were around them hawakumpenda tu jehovah peke yake pia waliwapenda watu waliokuwa karibu na wao in fact this is the only church that jesus commands to uh, for having love. Ah, uh, hasa kanisa hili ndilo Yesu analitaja kwa kuwa na mapendo. And not only love, na sio tu upendo, he also comments about their faith. Pia anataja kuhusu imani yao. Their deeds and love were motivated by the faith in Christ. Matendo yao na imani yao ilikuwa inachochewa na imani waliokuwa nayo katika Kristo. The strong faith they had is what bring brought forth the love and the good work they were doing there. Upendo mkuu waliokuwa nao tunda ya upendo 
mambo mema waliokuwa nafanya pale. And again he comments about the service. Na pia anataja kuhusu huduma. This church was heavily involved in ministry. Kanisa hili uh, lilikuwa limezama katika huduma and in serving other people. Na pia kwa kuwatumikia watu wengine. They served other people that were around them. Wale watumikia watu wengine pia walokuwa karibu na wao. So when you read about this you can see the, the, the service that Jesus was commanding. Hivyo unaposoma kuhusu haya utapata kuona huduma ambayo Yesu alikuwa anazungumzia. And again he comments about their patience. Na pia anataja kuhusu subira yao. They had patient in themselves. Walikuwa na subira ndani yao wenyewe. They endured. They were, they had that endurance in them. Walikuwa na ile uvumilifu ndani yao. The steadfastness of faith and love inside them. Ule upendo na, up, na, na, na imani ndani yao. And so that is to tell you they went through so many things. Basi hayo ni kukwambia kwamba walipitia mambo yaliyokuwa mengi. But in the process of going through those things, things they learn to be patient to wait upon the lord na katika kupitia yale yote walijifunza kumngojea bwana you know patience does not come when you pray about it wafahamu subira haiji wakati unaiombea but patience is the fruit of the holy spirit lakini nayo ni atunda la roho mtakatifu that you can only have it by going through a process of a situation for quite some time. Ambayo unaweza tu kuwa nayo wakati umepitia hali fulani ya maisha kwa wakati fulani. And Jesus now comments again by saying you are the, the, what you are doing right, right now is even becoming more. Na Yesu anataja pale kwa kusema kwamba yale mnayofanya sasa hivi ni zaidi. Their later works exceeds the first one acts they had to do basi matendo yao aliyokuwa yanafanywa wakati huo yalizidi yale yaliyokuwa ya kwanza that means they were growing in their faith basi hiyo ni kumaanisha walikuwa na ukuaji katika imani they were growing in love walikuwa na ukuaji katika upendo they were growing in service walikuwa na ukuaji katika huduma they were growing in patience walikuwa na ukuaji katika uvumilivu and they did a lot of thing every time they increased in what they were doing na basi kwa chochote walichokuwa nakifanya walikuwa wanaongezeka they were they were people who desired to do greater things and to move to higher level ni watu waliotamania kufanya vitu vikubwa na hasa kusonga katika viwango vya juu but look to the church today na tazama kanisa la leo you will wonder if this kind of uh, commendation can be found in the church today basi utabaki katika mshangao kama hasa mambo haya ambayo yametajwa hapa yanapatikana kwa kanisa la leo you can't find their works hawezi pata pale kazi matendo yao you don't see the true love wezi ona upendo wa kweli Most people are backbiting one another watu wana masengenyo moja kwa mwingine the love is diminishing and the hatred is increasing in the church na basi uh, upendo unapungua na chuki inaongezeka kanisani the faith is not in the church basi imani haipo kanisani because faith comes by hearing maana imani inakuja kwa kusikia and by hearing the word of god na kwa kusikia neno la mungu how will faith increase in church when the, the true gospel is not spoken in the church basi imani itaongezeka vipi kanisani kama neno la kweli la la la, la, la mungu halihubiriwi kanisani and people are not learning to serve one another na watu hawa ifunzi kumdumia moja kwa mwingine but they are exalting themselves ev- every day bali wanajiinua wenyewe kila siku but i want you to see one thing here nataka uone kitu kimoja hapa that this church was very different kwamba kanisa hili lilikuwa lenye utofauti that is why jehova is commanding about them na ndio sababu jehova anazungumzia kulihusu yes, i know anasema nafahamu i am aware ninajua about this church kulihusu kanisa hili but in verse 20 says nevertheless na katika mstari wa 20 anasema 
Nevertheless, Bila kujali, I have this against you. Niko na haya kwenu ninyi. And I want my brother to read it in Kiswahili. Nataka ndugu yangu ayasome katika Kiswahili. So that we can get to understand what he is really talking about. Ili tukaweze fahamu yale anayasungumzia hasa. Verse 20. Amsari wa 20. Verse 20 of Revelation. Aha, mstari wa 20 anasema mlango wa pili mstari wa 20 anasema lakini nina neno juu yako ya kwamba wamridia yule mwanamke Yesabeli yeye ajitae nabii na kuwafundisha watumishi wangu na kuwapoteza ili wazini na kula vitu vilivyolewa vilivyo sadaka Kwa sanamu. Now when Jesus had commanded about the church of Thyatira uh, wakati Yesu anasungumzia kuhusu kanisa la Thyatira he again says I have uh, I have this against you Anasema niko na hili juu yenu You have started tolerating this woman Jezebel you have started embracing con again yourself with the defilement of this woman. Uh, anasema, mumeansa tena kumukumbatia, mumeansa kushirikiana na huyu mwanamke ambaye ni msinifu. Jezebel, we learn about Jezebel in the Bible. Tunasoma kusu Jezebeli katika Biblia. A woman who made the nation of Israel to become confused and defied because of her heresy. Uh, manamke aliefanya mji kuoneka Na kuchanganyikiwa na kunajisika. A woman who made Israelites to start worshipping idols and even compromising their faith with God. Uh, Manamke aliefanya Israeli kuanza kuabudu miungu na hata uh, kukumbatia zile miungu. A woman who did not have the, 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 the spirit of God of accepting what God has given to her and the king and went ahead and killed Naboth because of greedy. Uh, manamke ambaye hakuwa na roho wa mungu wakukubalia uh, kila ambacho kilikuwa kinapaswa kufanya pamoja na mfalme akaenda na akasawabisha mauaji kwa sababu ya wifu she was full of greedy alikuwa mwenye wifu desiring things that are not belonging to her and even going to an extent of killing someone to have it. Na ku, ku, kutamania vitu ambavyo havikuwa vinapaswa kuwa pamoja nae na hata kuenda kiwango cha kumuwa yule mtu aliyekuwa nazo. She was a woman who sought influence. Alikuwa ni mwanamke aliyekuwa na ushawishi to dominate and rule. Kutawala na kumiliki. And so we see how she killed the prophets of Jehovah. Na tunaona vile aliwaua nabi wa Jehovah. And for, caused people to have sexual immorality everywhere. Na kusababisha watu kuwa na hasa dhampi yangono kila mahali. Making people to worship idol and even to eat the food that was offered to the uh, to, to the idols na kuwafanya watu kuabudu miungu na hata kuvila vyakula ambazo zilikuwa zimetolewa kwa sababu ya sanamu making the holy nation to be defiled and to turn against the will of god na kafanya taifa lote kunajishika na kugeuka kutokana na kutaka kwa mungu and now he's telling the church why are you tolerating this woman again na sasa anasema kwa kanisa kwamba Kwa nini tena mnamkubalia huyu mwanamke? Jezebel died. Jezebel alikufa. And he's no longer there. Hayupo tena. But this is just a symbol and a sign of showing this church that this character of Jezebel can also be identified in the church. Basi hii ilikuwa ni ishara na dalili ya kuonyesha kanisa kwamba ijapo Jezebel alikufa lakini zile tabia zake bado zinaweza kubaliwa kanisani ama kumbatiwa kanisani. And Jehovah is saying he calls herself a prophetess. Na Jehovah anasema kwamba mwanamke huyu anajiita mwenyewe nabii. How many people call themselves prophets in church and they have not been sent by God? Ni watu 
wangapi leo wanajiita manabii wenyewe kanisani na hawajaitwa na Mungu They are parading in the spirit of Jezebel Wanafanya kazi katika roho wa Jezebel He calls herself a, a prophet Anajiita mwenyewe nabii And you realize that so many people will come from different places to go and seek prophets from her Na utatambua kwamba watu wanatoka maeneo tofauti tofauti wanaenda kwake kuulizia zaidi unabii kuwahusu The spirit of Jezebel or Jezebel a prophetess was a, a liar and a deceiver Ah uh, roho wa Jezebeli na Jezebeli mwenyewe alikuwa muongo mdanganyaji And Jezebel deceives people and makes them to believe what is prophesizing is true when it is false Ah uh, Jezebeli mwenyewe anawadanganya watu na kusababisha watu kuamini anacho toa unabii kwayo uh, kwamba ni kweli wakati ni uongo And because people are not embracing the truth they will run to Jezebel so that they can be told what they want to hear not what God is saying through his word Na kwa sababu uh, Jezebel ni muongo watu watakimbia kukumbatia uongo na kuacha ukweli ambao unatokana na Mungu mwenyewe The spirit of deception has found a way of entering to the altar of God Ah uh, roho wa udanganyaji umepata nafasi ya kuingia katika madhabahu ya Mungu. Jezebel preached heresy and false doctrine to the church. Jezebel alihubiri mahubiri ya uongo kwa kanisa. How many false doctrine do we have in church today? Basi ni mafundisho mangapi ya uongo tulionao leo kanisani? How many times have we heard about heresy to the altar of God today? Ni mara ngapi tumesikia yasiyo ya kweli kwa madhabahu ya Mungu leo They are operating under the prophetess that is called Jezebel Wanatumika chini ya nabii Jezebel Because people go there seeking to find a solution but they end up finding themselves in deception Maana watu wanaenda pale wakiwa na matarajio ya kupata ukweli na wanajikuta wenyewe wakiwa wamekumbatia uongo How can the church that has been walking in love Kanisa malo limekuwa linatembea katika uh, ukweli. The people who have been walking in faith. Watu ambao wamekuwa natembea kwa ukweli. The people who have persevered so many things again they turn away from the truth and they start embracing lies. Watu ambao wamevumilia mambo mengi wanageuka kuacha ukweli na kuanza kukumbatia yaliyo ya uongo. It was Jezebel spirit that influenced the king Ahab to kill Naboth. Basi ni roho ya Jezebel ndio ilisababisha Sanabot kuawa because she was full of greedy maana alikuwa na ule uchoyo na wifu mwingi the church is full of greedy basi kanisa limejawa na hii roho ya ya ya, ya uchoyo ulafi and they are, they are full of greed wamejaa na ulafi their agenda is not the kingdom agenda ah basi lengo lao si lengo la kiufalme but they have their own personal agenda they are pursuing wako na malengo yao ambao wanafuatilia So Jezebel killed Naboth Basi Jezebeli anamua Naboth so that he can take over the land that belongs to this man Ili achukue mji ambao ulikuwa chini ya mtu huyo Jezebel spirit is a spirit that wants to dominate everybody and take everything to himself Na roho ya Jezebeli ni roho ambayo inataka kuji Cha, kujichukulia kila kitu the people who are in church but they want everything to be for themselves watu walio kanisani na wanataka kila kitu kiwe chao wenyewe when they see anybody with something good they say that should be mine wanapoona mtu na kitu kizuri wanasema basi hiyo inapasa iwe wa yangu when they see somebody with something new they say that should be mine wanapoona mtu na kitu kipya wanasema hiyo inapaswa kuwa changu and because they cannot have it so easily na kwa sababu hawawezi kuipata kwa urahisi they turn it into conspiracy of even killing so that they can gain it wanageuka wanafika kwa viwango hata ya kumuua mwenye hicho kitu ili wakipokee how many people have poisoned their brother in Christ so that they can take over their position of pastorial ni watu wangapi wamewatia wenzao sumu kanisani ili wakaweze kupata nafasi ya uchungaji how many people 
have killed other brothers and sisters in church so that they can take over and sing more than them. Watu wangapi wamewaua wenzao wapendwa wenzao kanisani ili wachukue nafasi ya uimbaji kanisani. How many people have killed other brothers so that they can lead the uh, the, the, the church and lead the ministry? Ah uh, watu wangapi wamewaua wapendwa wao ili wachukue uongozi kanisani na pia waongoze huduma. The spirit of Jezebel in church is operating. Roho wa Jezebeli angali anafanya kazi kanisani. So he killed Naboth so that he can take what does not belong to him. Hivyo akamua Naboth ili aweze kupata kila ambacho si chake. The love of God has disappeared in church and people are walking with hatred and jealousy and they don't want even to look unto other brothers. Upendo wa Kristo umekwisha kanisani. Sasa watu wanatembea katika chuki na wifu na hata hawataki kuangalia wapendwa wenzao. And that is the warning of Jesus to this church. Na basi hilo ni onyo la Bwana kwa kanisa hili. Stop tolerating these things in your church. Basi koma kuvumilia mambo haya kanisani. The false prophecy unabiwa uongo the spirit of Jezebel roho wa Yesebeli and he says by, by her teachings she mislead my servants anasema kwa mafundisho yake anawapoteza watumishi wangu Jezebel wa, was a person or a prophetess with a persuasive teaching uh, basi Yesebeli alikuwa nabii aliyekuwa na mafundisho yenye kukushawishi the teachings of Jezebel were teachings of men. Ah, uh, mafundisho ya Sebeli yalikuwa ni mafundisho ya wanadamu. They were full of himself. Walikuwa yalikuwa yamejaa yeye mwenyewe. The teachings of Jezebel were the wisdom and the knowledge of men. Ah, uh, basi mafundisho ya Sebeli yalikuwa ni bushara na ufahamu wa wanadamu. The philosophy of this world. Basi mafundisho ya dunia hii. And it trapped so many people with her teachings. Naye akawateka watu wengi sana na mafundisho yake. And people thought this are the right teaching when they were being deceived basi watu wakadani haya ndio mafundisho ya kweli wakati walikuwa nadanganywa we have a lot of false teaching in the in the church pana mafundisho ya uongo yaliyo mengi kanisani we have a lot of false teaching on the altar of god pana mafundisho ya uongo mengi katika madhabahu ya mungu and people are mis- misleading people of god na watu wanawapoteza watu wa mungu teaching them the teaching that are not from god but they are from themselves. Wakifundisha mafundisho yasiyo tokana na Mungu bali yanatokana na wao wenyewe. They have their style of trapping people. Wako na mtindo wao ya kuamiliki watu so that people can assume it is God who is saying but it's just men that are talking. Ili watu waone ni Mungu anayesungumza wakati ni wanadamu ndo wanaosungumza. And he says he is not just misleading with the teaching but he's also making the servants of God to have fall into sexual sin. Anasema hawapotezi tu kwa mafundisho, pia anawapoteza watumishi wa Mungu ili wakaweze jihusisha na hasa dhampi ya ngono. Sexual immorality is all over to the altar and in the church of Jesus today. Basi dhambi ya sina iko kila maeneo na sasa inakumbatiwa kanisani leo. You talk about it and people are not happy with you. Basi unaposungumzia kuihusu watu wanakosa kuwa na furaha nawe there is sexual immorality in praise and worship pana uh, dampi ya ngono katika sifa na maabudu men of god have been trapped in this sexual sin basi watumishi wa mungu wamejipata katika dhambi hii great men have been defiled by sexual sin basi watu wakuu wamenajishika na hii dhambi ya ngono they anointed servants of god that god had entrusted the message of the kingdom have been defied with the sexual sin. Watumishi wa Mungu waliopakwa mafuta ambao Mungu aliwaaminia na neno lake wametekwa nyara na hii dhampi ya ngono. And they are tolerating with this sin of sexual sin without knowing the consequences of that sin. Na wanakubaliana na aina hii ya dhampi bila kujua madhara ya dhampi hiyo. When we tolerate sin in the church of God. Tunapokubaliana na dhampi kanisani pa Mungu. When we tolerate sexual immorality in the church of God. Tunapokubaliana na dhambi ya ngumu ya dhambi ya ngono katika madhabahu ya Mungu. We are seeking the anger 
of God to be fall upon the church. Basi tunatafuta hasira ya Mungu ikaweze kutua, kutua kwa nisani. And so Jesus is saying to John Na sasa Yesu anasema kwa Yohana By her teaching is misleading my servants into sexual immorality. Kwa mafundisho yake anawapotoza watumishi wangu wajihusisha na dhambi ya zina. In other words they were told there is no big deal by doing sexual sin it's just a normal thing. Ah kwa maneno mengine wanasema hapana jambo kubwa unapojihusisha na dhambi ya ngono ni jambo la kawaida. That is to tell you the fear of God has departed away from them. Basiyo ni kukwambia kwamba hofu ya Mungu imekwisha waondokea. The fear of God has departed from the church. Hofu ya Mungu imekwisha ondoka kanisani. And they are now ratifying the desires of their flesh. Basi sasa wanajaribu kutimiza matamanio ya mwili. You know the flesh has to die. Basi wajua mwili unapaswa kufa. Galatians 5:16 says, Wa Galatia 5:16 inasema, Be led by the spirit of God. Basi na uongozwe na Roho Mtakatifu wa Mungu so that you may not fulfill the desires of your flesh ili usije timiza matamanio ya mwili when you see these people being led with the lust of sexual immorality unapoona watu hawa wanaongozwa na roho wa utendaji ngono it tells you how serious the church is right now inakujulisha namna kanisa lipo katika biashara leo the church has fallen from the spiritual life Ah kwamba kanisa limeanguka kutoka katika maisha ya kiroho. The church is being led by carnal men and carnal deeds. Na kanisa sasa linaongozwa na watu wa umwili na wenye matendo ya umwili. The leaders are carnal. Wa vi, wale viongozi ni wa umwili. The praise and worship is carnal. Basi sifa na kuabudu wanaongoza ni wa umwili. And every person is becoming carnal. Na kila mtu anafanyika wa umwili. So that they can fulfill the desires of the flesh. Ili wakaweze timiza matamanio ya mwili. So Jesus saying, "See, you are doing good." Ah, Yesu anasema, "Ona, mwatenda mema." But you have begun tolerating these things in your midst again. Lakini mshaanza kubaliana na mambo haya katika tienu tena. Let us rebuke sin in our midst. Basi wacha na tukeme dhambi katika tienu. Let us call sin sin. Wacha tuite dhambi dhambi. Let us rebuke sexual immorality. Wacha tukeme dhambi ya sina. Let us rebuke heresy. Wacha tu akeme uongo. When we discern such a like things, tunapotambua vitu na kama hizo, the church of God is going to remain pure. Basi kanisa la Mungu litasalia safi. And I love this that he says here. Na napenda kile anachosema hapa. Verse 21. Msari wa 21. He says I have given her time to repent. Anasema ni mem pa muda wa, 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 wa ili atubu of her immorality uh, ili atubu usinsi wake but she is unwilling lakini yeye hajakubaliana nayo the judgment of god does not appear to the church without god giving them first the opportunity of repenting basi hukumu ya mungu haiwezi tuwa kanishani kabla mungu kuwapeni watu wake nafasi ya kuungama so he gave this woman an opportunity of repenting alimpa mwanamke huyu nafasi ya kuziungama dhambi zake from her immorality kutokana na usinsi wake but she was unwilling lakini hakutaka yeye listen to this somebody sikiza hii mtu god has given to all of us opportunity of repentance bwana amepeana sisi sote tunuku ya kutubu so what is repentance basi kutubu ni nini the simple word and definition of repentance is to change the mind ah uh, basi neno ra hisi ambalo linaelezea zaidi kuhusu kutubu ni mbadiliko wa mawazo 
repentance means change your mind, change your way. Kutubu kwa manisha kubadilisha niya yako, kubadilisha njia yako. Change your ways from immorality. Kubadili njia zako kutokana na ushinzi. From false teaching. Kutokana na mafundisha ya uongo. From defilement. Kutokana na unajishi. And be holy. Na uwe mtakatifu. And blameless in my eyes. Ushie na lawama machoni pangu. So Jesus is giving this revelation to John. Na Yesu anapeana ufunuo huu kwa Yohana. I have given her time. Nime mpa mda. And God has been waiting so patiently for the church to change. Nae Mungu amekuwa anasubiri kanisa likaweze kubadilika. Do you know why he's not coming? Unajua kwa nini yeye hajarudi? He is waiting patiently so that the church can be changed. Anangoja kwa uvumilifu ili kanisa liweze kubadilishwa. Because the church that Jesus building right now. Mana kanisa analulijenga Yesu sasa hivi. It is a glorious church ni kanisa lenye utukufu that is going to conquer the warfare of the world ambao litaenda kushinda vita vya dunia that is going to dominate the world ambao inaenda kumiliki dunia that is going to fill the world with God's glory ambao litajasa dunia na utukufu wa Mungu the church that is going to fill the world with the principles and the character of heaven Ad, um, kanisa malo linaenda kujasa dunia na kanuni za Mungu toka mbinguni the church that is going to conquer the nations kanisa malo linaenda kushinda mataifa and overpower the evil things of this world na kushinda maofu yote ya dunia hii but how can the church become that way or conquer the world when they are tolerating with the world basi kanisa litashinda vipi dunia kama bado wanakubaliana na dunia they are still associating and cooperating with the world basi lingali lina mahusiano na dunia they are having sexual immorality with the world wanakuwa na dhambi sasina kule inche za ushindi how can the church have power to conquer the world basi kanisa litapata vipi nguvu za kushinda dunia if the church cannot say no to the world and embrace the culture of the kingdom basi kama kanisa haliwezi sema hapana la kwa dunia na kukumbatia ufalme how can we distinguish the church with the world basi tutatofautisha vipi kanisa na ulimwengu if they are talking the same language and eating the same food and behaving the same character kama wanakula mesa moja na dunia wanazungumza lugha moja na dunia na tabia zao ni sawa na za dunia and jehovah is saying na jehovah anasema i have given them time to change nimewapeni muda wa kubadilika there is time for everything na wakati wa kila jambo listen to me the church nisikize kanisa you still have opportunity bado uko na fursa that time is going to end na huo unakwenda kuisha you will not tell jesus hautamwambia yesu you didn't give me time to change ukunipa muda wa kubadilika listen to this sikiza hii the city of jericho mji wa jericho for 40 years kwa miaka 44 they were given an opportunity of change walipewa fursa ya kubadilika before the destruction son came upon them kabla uharibifu wafikie and for 40 years when the children of israel were walking in wilderness na kwa miaka 40 wana wa israeli walipokuwa natembea katika jangwa they were so busy building the wall that will protect them from any enemy walika katika biashara za kujenga kuta zitakazo wazuia na adui so they placed their faith in the walls instead of repenting and turning away from the wickedness hivyo wakaweka tumaini lao kwa zile kuta walizokuwa wamejenga badala ya kutubu na kumgeukia bwana but they were all given the same opportunity with Rahab the harlot that was in the seat of Jericho wakapewa fursa moja na Rahab ambaye alikuwa katika mji wa Jericho Rahab was known as a harlot Rahab alijulikana kama kahaba she was a woman of wickedness alikuwa ni mwanamke mwenye uofu but i read this woman in the book of hebrew lakini nasoma mke huyu ku, kutoka katika kitabu cha Waibrania the, 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 the writer comments about the women and the men of faith uh, wakati mwandishi anataja kuhusu wanawake wenye imani listen to me somebody nisikize mtu in jericho 
katika Jericho Rahab was among the people that are going to be destroyed by Jehovah Rahab alikuwa ni mmoja wa watu waliokuwa waharibiwe na Jehovah But when Rahab heard about what Jehovah God had done to the children of Israel Naye Rahab aliposhikia taarifa za matendo ya Mungu kwa wana wa Israeli And even God used him to save the spies that entered the city Na pia Mungu akamtumia kuokoa wale through that faith Jehovah saved her together with the household katika ile imani mungu akamuokoa yeye pamoja na nyumba yake my point is this basi point yangu ni hii the people that were destroyed watu walioharibiwa together with the rahab that was saved pamoja na rahab aliyeokolewa they were all given an opportunity of pewa fursa sawa ya kutubu but not all of them rip wote waliungama dhambi zao only rahab together with the household rahab peke yake pamoja na nyumba yake and so he says i have given her time to repent na hivyo anasema nimewapeni muda ulio sawa kutubu there is an opportunity of everybody to change his mind basi kuna fursa ya kila mtu kubadili nia yake he is telling the church of tiatira anaambia kanisa la tiatira you still have time to change from this tolerance bado kuna muda wa kubadilisha kutokana na uh, kuvumilia huku the church in kenya kanisa la kenya and the church all over the world na makanisa ulimwengu mzima they still have the time to repent bado yangalipo na muda wa kutubu to stop tolerating with the sin in the church kukoma kukubaliana na dhambi kanisani where people come to church with wickedness and they can never be told because they are givers of money ambako watu wanaingia kanisani na uofu hawakatazwi kwa sababu wanaingia malangoni pa makanisa They do sexual sin and they bring a lot of money in the church. Wanafanya usinsi pale nje na wanakuja na pesa zilizo nyingi kanisani. They kill people like Rahab and and I acquire their property and they bring it to the church. Wanawaua watu kama Rahab, wananyakua rasilimali zao na wanakuja nazo kanisani. They use deception language and acquire wealth from that deception and bring it to the altar. Of Jehovah Yahweh wanatumia lugha ya udanganyifu kupata rasilimali na wanakuja nazo kanisani these are false prophets basi hawa ni manabii wa uongo they have good cars wako na magari mazuri they have good houses wako na nyumba zilizo bora which is not wrong ambazo ambayo si mbaya how did you get that lakini house? ulipata vipi nyumba hiyo how did you get that vehicle ulipata vipi gari lako can we hold you accountable je tunawe za kukuulizia utoe taarifa yake and tell us how did you acquire that na utu taarifu ni vipi ulipata hiyo god is giving you the time to repent mungu anakupatia muda wa kutubu when jesus of nazareth wakati yesu wa nazareth was walking one day alikuwa anatembea siku moja and he met this man called zacchaeus na anakutana na mwanaume anaitwa zacchaeo zacchaeus took jesus into his house zacchaeo akamchukua yesu kwa mji kwa nyumba yake and they began talking about the kingdom of god basi wakaanza kuwasiliana kuhusu ufalme wa mbinguni jesus began unveiling the mystery of the kingdom to this man basi yesu akaanza kufichua siri za ufalme kwa mwanaume sakayo and sakayas became guilty because of what he has done na sakayo akahukumikia maofu aliyokuwa ameyafanya a willing person to repent mtu anayetikia kutubu you shall know the truth basi wewe utajua kweli and the truth shall set you free nayo kweli takuweka huru as jesus unveiled the mystery of the kingdom kama yesu alipofichua siri za ufalme zacchaeus repented by giving back what he had taken that does not belong to him basi naye sakaya kaitikia kwa kutubu na kurejesha vyote alizopokea kwa njia isiyokuwa bora and he said anybody who 
whom I took from him I'm going to give it double back to him. Hallelujah. Na nasema yeyote niliyochukua kwake kwa njia isiyo bora na kwenda kumpa maradufu. That was the true repentance of God. Basi wewe ulikuwa ni kutubu kwa kweli kwa Mungu. I have given her time to repent. Nimempa muda wa kutubu. Brother who is watching Pendwa unayetutisama. The sister who is watching. Dada unayetutisama. Whoever that is listening. Ye, yote anayetusikiza. We are all given the same measure, the same time, the same opportunity of changing our ways. Basi sote tumepewa muda ama wakati uliosawa wa kugeuka na kuziacha njia zetu mbaya. Stop tolerating with the sin. Basi koma kukubaliana na dhambi. Stop tolerating with the world. Koma kukubaliana na ulimwengu. Stop tolerating with the things that are defiling you. Koma kukubaliana na vitu zinazokutia unajisi. You are not of this world. Wewe si wa huu dunia. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jina la Bwana nalibarikiwe. Verse 22, Mu- I love this. Mustari wa 22 napenda hii. So I will cast her on a bed of suffering. Basi nitamuweka kwenye uh, kwenye kitanda cha mateso. I will cast him to the bed of the suffering. Uh, so I will cast her ni, on a bed of suffering. Nitamweka kwenye kitanda cha mateso. And I will make those who commit adultery with her suffer intensely na, unless they repent of her ways. Na wote wanaojihusisha na dhambi za anasa pamoja na yeye watateseka kwa sana. Jesus is saying, Yesu anasema, I am going to send the suffering to these people. Naenda kutuma mateso kwa watu hawa. Where the suffering increasing in church. Kwa nini mateso yanaongezeka kanisani? Because the church is lying on the same bed with the world. Maana kanisa linalala na ka, 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 katika kitanda sawa kanisani. And he says those who commit idolatry and adultery with this person, I am going to treat them and make them suffer intensely. Na anasema wote wanaojihusisha katika uh, dhambi hii ya zina uh, ya anasa pamoja naye naenda kusababisha wateseke sana He is going to intensify the suffering in the church until the people will know there is something that is not going well in the church Anaenda kuachilia mateso kanisani hadi watu wakafahamu kwamba pana kitu kibaya kinafanyika kanisani Now I know Sasa najua The reason how God shakes the church in Kenya Jinsi Mungu anatingiza kanisa la Kenya. How God is shaking the great men and the great women in Kenya. Jinsi Mungu anawatingiza wanaume wakuu, watumishi wakuu na wanawake wakuu hapa Kenya. How God is shaking the ministries in Kenya. Jinsi Mungu anatingiza huduma za hapa Kenya. And the suffering is intense is being intensified by God himself. Na mateso yanaongezeka na Mungu mwenyewe. That is not the devil, it is the hand of God in operation. Basi huyo si shetani ni mkono wa Mungu ulio katika kazi. And he says unless they repent her ways. Ah, na anasema ah, hadi watakapo ziungama njia zao. He's going to shake them until they repent their ways of Jezebel. Anaenda kuwatigiza hadi wakatubu njia zao za Jezebel. And he says I will strike her children dead. Na anasema nitawaua watoto wao. God can even allow death to come because he's speaking and people are not listening. Amungu anaweza ruhusu kifo kije maana hawajamsikiza. When he's talking and people are not listening, he even strike people with death so that they can listen what he's talking to them. Anapoongea na watu hawamsikizi, anaweza wagonga watu na kifo ili watu wakaweze msikiza. And he says I'm going to kill their children. Anasema katika mstari wa 23 ya kwamba nami nitawaua watoto wao then all the churches will know na makanisa yote yatajua that will be sent to other churches basi itakuwa ishara kwa makanisa mengine the other churches that are still tolerating with the world 
Kanisa mengine ambaye angalipo yanakubaliana na dunia. That you cannot mess with Jehovah. Ya kwamba hauwezi uwezi fanya vibaya na Mungu. You cannot tolerate with the sin and run away from uh, from it. Hauwezi kubaliana na dhambi na kuitoroka. Then the church shall know. Basi kanisa litajua. That I am he who searches the heart and the minds of people. Kwamba mimi ndimi ninayetafuta mioyo na mawazo nia za wanadamu. Brothers and sisters that are watching right now. Wapendwa mnaotutishama sasa hivi. There is nothing you are doing that is secret in the eyes of God. Hapana chochote unachokitenda kilicho shirini machoni pa Mungu. He searches the mind and the hearts of men. Yeye anawachunguza hadi mioyoni na katika mawazo pa wanadamu. He knows what you are thinking. Anajua unachofikiria. He knows your next step. Anajua hatua yako inayofuata. He knows your next mind. Anajua mawazo yako yanayofuata. Your wife may not know. Basi mke wako anaweza kosa kujua. Your may not know. Mume wako anaweza kosa kufahamu. The next person to you may not know. Mtu aliyekaribu nawe anaweza kosa kufahamu. But he says I will do something that will make the church to know. Na anasema nitafanya kitu kitakacho watuma kujua. That I am the man I'm, I'm God who searches the heart and the mind of people. Ah, kwamba mimi ndimi Mungu nitafutae mioyo za watu. And I will repay each of you according to your deeds. Na nitawalipeni kila mmoja wenu linkana na matendo yenu. You can't run away with that sin. Wezi kimbia na dhambi hiyo. But God has given you an opportunity of repenting. Ni Mungu amekupatia nafasi ya kutubu. Stop hiding. Koma kujificha. Stop pretending. To toka katika kujifanya repent and he's going to forgive you tubu anaenda kukusamehe the church kanisa the church kanisa is being called to repentance linaitwa katika toba because the church is the light of the world maana kanisa ndilo nuru la dunia how can the church again become the darkness of the world jinsi ipi kanisa tena litafanyika giza la dunia by tolerating with sin kwa kukubaliana na dhampi by mixing itself with idolatry sexual sin and wrong teachings kwa kujichanganya na mafundisho ya uongo na usinsi na mambo mengine kama hayo and he says na anasema now i said to you the rest of you in theatira na sasa nasema na ninyi wote mliosalia theatira you who do not hold to her teaching ah nyinyi ambao hamjasikiza mafundisho yake and have not learned certain so called deep secrets uh, na wale ambao hamjajifunza yale siri ya ndani i will not impose any other burden on you sita wawekea mzigo wote kwenu now listen sasa sikiza there were people and we still have people we call remnant in the church today pana watu na tungalipo na watu ambao tunawaita masalio kanisani they have refused to tolerate with this nonsense wamekataa kustahimili au pumbafu aina huu they have refused to get themselves into this mess wamekataa kujihusisha na uharibifu they have refused to learn what, what the, the so called the the, the deep secrets of satan wamekata kujifunza siri sandani sa setani and they say no because they embrace holiness of god na wanasema hapana maana wanakumbatia utakatifu wa jehova mungu because god has given them authority and power to overcome all this maana mungu amewapeni mamlaka na uweza wa kuyashinda haya yote where is the church today basi kanisa li wapi leo what is the condition of the church of Kenya today Hali ya kanisa katika nchi ya Kenya leo ni ipi What is the condition of the leaders of the church today Hali ya viongozi wa kanisa leo ni ipi When the leaders of the church are corrupt Wakati viongozi wa kanisa ndo wamefanyika wafisadi They cannot stand for the truth Hawawezi simama na kueleza kweli They have been compromised with money Wamekubaliana na pesa they been compromised with sexual sin. Wamekubaliana na dhambi ya ngono. They have been compromised with the desires of the things of the world. Wamekubaliana na matamanio ya vitu vya dunia. The altar is full of riches and all the things of the world and that is their goal of preaching. Madhabahu yao yamejawa na vitu vyote 
vyote vya utajiri vya dunia na uh, hayo ndio uh, mwito huo ndio mwito wao wa mahubiri that is to tell you basi hiyo ni kukuambia they are chasing their own agenda and they left god's agenda long time ago wanafukuzana na malengo yao wenyewe na wameachana na malengo ya mungu god has his own agenda of the church mungu yuko na malengo yake kwa kanisa and you need to know that na unapaswa kufahamu hayo because failure to know god's agenda maana unapokosa kufahamu malengo ya mungu kwa kanisa you will start chasing your own agenda utaanza kufukuzana na agenda zako where is the church today kanisa liko wapi leo i have given you the time to repent nimewapeni muda wa kutubu and you are unwilling nanyi hamjakubali and he says i'm going to strike you with sickness na nasema naenda kuwagonga na magonjwa i'm going to strike you with the, uh, with the, with the death naenda kuwachapa na kifo so that the other churches can learn from you ili makanisa mengine yapate kujifunza kutoka Where kwenu is the church full with sickness Kwa nini kanisa limejawa na magonjwa the people are being prayed for and they are not getting healed watu wanaombewa kanisani na hawaponi because the church is defined maana kanisa limenajisika and god is speaking through that sickness and death in church na mungu anazungumza kupitia katika ugonjwa huo na vifo kanisa i have given him time to repent nimeompa muda wa kutubu but he is unwilling lakini yeye hajaitikia when you hear the voice of the lord unaposikia sauti ya bwana do not harden your heart basi usifanye moyo wako kuwa mgumu because this is your day of salvation maana hii ni siku yako ya uokovu may the lord god bless you bwana mungu akubariki thank you so much asante sana amen amen powerful and encouraging message so touching the word of god is sharper than a two-edged sword it has really pierced oh hallelujah thank you man of god god bless you so much because in the nation of kenya truly speaking because i'm also a servant of god we have few servants of god that can preach the gospel like the one we are receiving now very few man of god i come back to you i know that i have so many questions and i know that also my viewers wherever they ha- they are they have so many questions to ask but before i come to you i want to look at david in the book of psalms 73 david 73 from verses 3 from verses 2 and 3 the bible says but as for me my feet had almost slipped i had nearly lost my foot hold for i envied the arrogant when i saw the prosperity of the wicked So man of God I want to come back to you so that you can speak to us again a little Psalm 73 2 and 3 verses 2 and 3 David says I almost slipped or I almost got lost I almost fallen when I envied the arrogant Hallelujah mm. when I saw the prosperity of the wicked today's church hallelujah today's church man of god many people are getting lost just like the mind that was in david because of the prosperity you know when we find a preacher that is preaching like you we say oh uh, we start even to quote the scripture that our god is not poor he left his riches for us he died poor for us to be made rich is there any problem when we are preaching about the gospel of prosperity 
Because I see you touching about Jezebel and the deception that is in the church today. Is there any problem, man of God, for us to preach about prosperity in the church? Enlighten us. I want to say uh, that when we preach about the prosperity, God has given the principles that makes the believer to have the true pre, uh, uh, prosperity of kingdom. And the right procedure that we can follow so that God can give us his blessings. But when we come to the church today, you realize the whole preaching is all about, it's like God is waiting for everybody to give money so that we can become prosperous. The value of our prosperity must begin from inside to outside. Udamana wa ufanisi wetu unapaswa kuanza toka kwandani ukija inche. Remember when I began speaking, I said in Revelation 3 verse 18 that the, the Lord looked at those people who said they are rich but they were very poor in his eyes. Akumbuka nilipo anza kuhubiri kwamba bwana aliwaona wale watu waliokuwa wanaona kwamba wao ni matajiri sana lakini walikuwa ni maskini mno. They were very poor. They looked at themselves adorning themselves with good garment but God saw them naked. But listen to this somebody. When Jehovah God of Israel led the children of Israel into the promised land. He said, when you go there and live in the house that you did not build and eat from the vineyard that you did not plant and possess everything that you did not even fight for, then when you have eaten and you are satisfied, do not forget the Lord your God who brought you out of slavery. Hallelujah. And so many people think when you have money and all prosperity, you have already attained the will of God. And now that becomes a blindness to so many people. There is nothing wrong for somebody having millions and millions of money because we need those millions in the kingdom of God. But I said one thing. If we hold pastors accountable and ask them, how can you explain to us how did you get this property? I want to tell you 95% will fear to be evaluated and they will run away to be accountable because they are liars. Nataka nikwambie kwamba asilimia 95 Wataturoka, watakakata kutoa hesabu Yamali walionayo Because they cannot be accountable of what they are holding today Mana hawezi kutoa hesabu ya kile walichonacho leo Ask him how did you get this phone Mulize ulipata vipi simu hii How did you acquire this house Ulipata vipi nyumba hii How did you acquire this Mercedes Benz Ulipata hili gari vipi They can't be accountable and that is to tell you that is not the true prosperity. But we have the true men of God in Kenya. Some of them have never been known even with anybody. But they are there preaching and teaching the true gospel. Some of them they are very rich and they are accountable 
table. Now, when I was at our hesabu, apart from preaching, they do things that bring, uh, gives them money. Mahakando na mahubiri wanafanya vitu zinazoleta pesa kwao. And they are accountable. Na wanaweza toa hesabu to the government kwa shirikali and even to God. Na hata kwa Mungu mwenyewe. And that is true prosperity. Na huo ndio ufanisi wa kweli. Amen. Amen. Thank you man of God for clarifying that to us. And also I wanted you to tell us you know the, the Bible was talking about Jezebel. And as we know Jezebel is not a man, she is a woman. So perhaps also in gender women will be attacked and, s and said oh M women are like Jezebel they are because it was all about the prophetess Jezebel. Also to defend the prophets of God and the prophetesses of God. Does Jezebel simplify both men and women that are doing this immorality sin or idolatry sin in the church or it's only about women? Jesus was so specific by using the character of this woman in this church. Yesu alikuwa hasa kabisa anatumia tabia ya mke huyu kwa kanisa. He would have chosen any character of the old. Angechukua mtie yote wa kale. But he chose because this character was unique by itself and he wanted to use it as a warning. Na alichagua mana tabia hii ilikuwa ni ya kitofauti na litaka kwa kuitumia kama onyo and again the devil does not only use women he they use men too ah pia shetani hatumii tu wanawake pia anawatumia wanaume but there was a reason as per why he chose the character specifically the character of Jezebel so that he can warn the church na kuna sababu iliyomtuma Yesu hasa kutumia mfano huu wa Jezebel ili alitahadharishe kanisa and so the devil or sin affects the, 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 the men and the women if they are not in the spirit. Na hivyo kukujibu ni kwamba shetani anawatumia wote wanawake na wanaume kama hawapo katika roho. Amen. Thank you. So it's all about a warning and also the character that was in Jezebel. And, and as we look now to the church to the church all over the world or particularly in Kenya that this character is to both men and women and also I want to say something or you want to add something there is something that I just want to add because I've seen you have seen on television you have seen this happening and men getting married to men and women getting married to women lesbian homosexual and all these kinds of things happening to the altar uh, umekwishaona ume katika runinga uh, wanawake wanaoana wanawake kwa wanawake wanaume wanageukiana wanaoana wenyewe kwa wenyewe na aina hizi zote za tabia uh, zikifanyika katika ulimwengu and, and fighting to have that freedom na wanapigania sana kupata uh, uhuru ule so that the government can allow them to do all this wickedness na hii serikali iweze kuwaruhusu kufanya uovu huu wote and so when you see these things happening na unapoona mambo haya yanafanyika that is to bring the judgment of God upon the land and upon the church. Basi hiyo ni kuleta hukumu ya Mungu kwa kanisa na pia kwa ulimwengu mzima. And those are the wickedness of Jezebel. Na hayo ndio yalikuwa maofu ya Jezebel. The confusion and interference of the will of God. Ah kule kuchanganyikiwa na uharibifu wa kutaka kwa Mungu. Amen. Thank you also for adding that we give God all the glory. I want to ask again also to go back a little that uh, on the side of giving, man of God, uh, how are we supposed to give? Are we supposed to bribe God? I, I take it as bribery. Give and you shall receive in return. If I am sick, I go to the man of God to be prayed for. He will require a sacrifice. And we go to extent of giving even a sum of the sacrifice. That if you want to be healed from cancer, now it has become like an, a hospital where the, the, the doctor diagnoses your sickness and he prescribes the value of the medicine that you need to take. That this one, because you will ask the doctor, how much is, go is it going to cost me? 
to do this dialysis, to do this or to receive this medicine, how much is going to cost me weekly or monthly or yearly. So you will see even the man of God, because I, 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 I overheard one man of God says, this is the last, the last hospital. So the church has become the last hospital. I don't know if it has changed also to be the real last hospital that the doctor who is the pastor diagnoses, diagnoses your sickness and also prescribes the medicine and gives you the value of the, the, the medicine that you need to take. Is it really and holistic for us to give a sum of money to compensate our sicknesses or the curses that we have? Because sometimes also you can find that to break this curse, you need to give a hundred thousand because this curse was it was raised with a sum of money so you 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 also need to i don't know how they speak, say it unafaa kui eh god forgive us hata nashindwa kuisema one of the things i want you to know moja wapo ya vitu ninazotaka ufahamu is this not only me man of god I know we have so many questions because people are passing through this. Yes. So do not take it as if the man of God is answering me. I yes. believe you also have those questions with you. Mm. Receive them mm. as I receive. Amen. One of the things that I want to say is this. There were so many blind people the days of Jesus but not all of them were Uh, vipofu wengi sana walikuwepo nyakati za Yesu na si wote walioweza kupona there were so many lepers not healed all of them walikuwa na viwete wengi sana lakini si wote waliweza kupona and listen to this sikiza hii what if this person will give a sacrifice of 100000 and tomorrow he die Ah, kwamba je mtu huyu atoe dhabihu ya shilingi elfu mia moja na kesho anakufa the interest of god the father ah, hasa kile anachohitaji mungu baba sana is all of us to have the good health ni kwamba sote tuweze kuwa na afya bora one of the blessing that we enjoy every day is to have good health of our bodies moja wapo ya baraka tunazofurahikia sana kila siku ni kuwa na afya bora katika mili zetu the life we have maisha tuliyonayo when we have good health in our bodies tukiwa na afya nzuri katika mili zetu and now when somebody tells you na sasa mtu anapokuambia you need to give money for god to heal you unahitaji kutoa fedha ili mungu akuponye it is like telling you god has just been waiting for your money for him to answer ni sawia na kusema mungu amekuwa anasubiria pesa zako ili atoe majibu yake god heals his people because he is a healer. Mungu anawaponya watu wake kwa sababu yeye ni Mungu mponyaji. How many people are sick and they don't have even money? Ni watu wangapi leo ni wagonjwa na hata hawana pesa? Will God let them die because they never gave out money to pastor? Je, Mungu atawaruhusu wafe kwa sababu hawajapeana pesa kwa mchungaji? Why does God heal so that people Ah uh, ah uh, can be healed. Ah uh, kwa nini Mungu anaponya ili watu wakaweze kupona? For him to be glorified. Ili yeye Mungu peke yake apewe utukufu. So it is not money that brings healing. Basi si pesa zinazoleta uponyaji. It is not billions of money that will make people to be healed. Sio mabilioni ya pesa zinazowatuma watu kupona. Isaiah 55 says come buy from me without money. Ah uh, Isaiah amsina tano ananakili anasema njoo mkanunue kutoka kwangu bila pesa zozote. And that is to tell you freely you have been given freely give. Basi hiyo ni kukujulisha kwamba umepewa kwa bure nawe peana kwa bure. If inside me I feel like I want to bless the servant of God with money. 
kama ndani yangu kabisa na hisi nataka kumbariki mtumishi wa Mungu na pesa I will bless the servant of God nitambariki mtumishi wa Mungu there, were, uh, there, there was a day when Jesus hid 10 lepers kuna siku uh, Yesu aliwaponya viwete kumi. were they lepers or uh, 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 there the, 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 the were 10 men who came to Jesus lepers yes they were all healed wote walipona but one came to thank him Mmoja alirejea na shukurani. And he asked where are others? Na akauliza, "Je, wenzako wale tisa wako wapi wengine?" When God heals, Mungu anapoponya. And I feel like I need to reciprocate. Na ni hisi kwamba nami nahitaji kurejesha mkono. I want to thank God for what he has done. Tamani kumshukuru Mungu kwa kila amekifanya. That is acknowledging what he has done. Basi hiyo ni kutambua kila ambacho yeye Mungu amekufanya. I will give out of my heart. Nitatoa toka ndani ya moyo wangu. So if people can be told this cancer you need to give 100,000, this HIV you need to give 200,000, this that is a fake teaching and it's a wrong doctrine that has manipulated everybody and if you try to speak against it it seems like you have fallen from grace basi kama watu wataanza kusema kwamba magonjo haya ya saratani inahitaji kutoa 1100 magonjo ya virusi vya ukimwi ni toa 1100 na mengine basi hayo ni mafundisho ya uongo na yanaashiria kwamba watu wamekwisha anguka kutoka katika utukufu wa Mungu one thing that i want to conclude by saying Jambo moja ambalo nataka kulitaja kwa kumalizia It is not money that heals anybody it is faith and the blood of Jesus Christ Kwamba pesa hazimponyi mtu yote ni imani iliyo ndani ya mtu huyu ndio inayomponya pamoja na damu ya Yesu Kristo iliyomwagika pale msalabani And if inside your heart you feel convinced that you need to to give na kama ndani ya moyo wako kabisa unashawishika unahitaji kutoa it is not a conviction of a pastor or a post or anybody asio kwa kushawishiwa na mtume ama mtie yote yule then you can give basi unaweza toa amen. amen thank you man of god i thought it was only me who is asking these questions by finishing i want also to read a comment of one of our sisters she's called Apondi she's saying i'm totally blessed but i'm confused cuz i don't know where to start cuz most of the churches nowadays if you don't pay money you won't receive the desire of your heart thanks for opening my my eyes that is our sisters respond to the message of the servant of God today and we thank God really for receiving this great opening of our eyes it is by the grace of God so i want also to i want to thank God because of the man good and we are getting blessed so next week again we are here on wednesday be ready to remove every confusion like our sister Beatrice to remove every confusion for your eyes to be enlightened and your eyes to be opened because most of the churches today are preaching about giving not in the way of the Lord may your eyes be open God is ready to bless you the psalmist says blessed is the man blessed is the man blessed is the man when you follow the psalmist you shall be like a tree that is planted beside the waters aha uh -huh. one of these fine days i'm going to take uh, the people through the series of giving ah moja wapo ya hizi siku mpendwa nitawapitisheni ama nitawafundisheni pia kuhusu mafundisho ya kutoa and uh, it's going to be a blessing to so many people na mimi itakuwa ni ya baraka kwa wengi and uh, i know god will make a way na najua mungu atatengeza njia oh we love the lord because of the man of god who is just volunteering to do this for us so that we can receive what god wants us to receive god bless you so much pastor harrison for your time thank you so much for everything that you have forsaken to come and teach the people of god 
about the love of God himself. And we thank you also, Pastor Johnston. God bless you so much. So we want to take a few minutes to pray for you. I heard a prayer, a prayer request. One of my sisters asked God to give her, to, to bless her financially, financially because she has a car that is stuck somewhere. So she's trusting God to receive that car this week in Jesus' name. So I don't think if we are going to ask you to pay for you to receive the car. The car already is yours. Receive it in the name of Jesus. We are just going to ask the Lord and for you to trust upon him that his will to be done upon your life through that car to be given, to be handed over to you in Jesus' name. Because that is your blessing already. Possess it in Jesus' name. And also we had a sister who asked for a prayer. A prayer for the family that the husband forsook her, left her, and went. I think he went for another marriage. I don't know, but she was really in agony and tears, crying for the Lord to see her through in Jesus' name. So those are the prayer requests that I received today. And others also who have not yet sent their prayer requests, God is going to touch you when the man of God is going to pray. Welcome, Pastor Harrison, that you may pray for God's people. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you so much because of this blessed evening. Do We thank you, Lord, for everything that, Lord, you have spoken unto us this day. How I pray that, Lord, your word is going to become reality in our life. And you are going to fulfill your purpose because you don't send your word without a cause. Yes. And Father, I pray even for our people who are viewing today. Yes. Some are trusting for the finances breakthrough so that they can revive their vehicle. So that they can pay out their loans. So that they can have Lord Jesus to continue ahead with their life. How I pray that Lord may you open for that brother. May you open for that sister the breakthrough of finances, my Lord, so that they may be able, Jehovah El Shaddai, Father, to receive abundance of your grace, abundance of your blessings in their life. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we declare that even those people that are having issues in their marriages, my Father, may you restore their marriage. Lord Jesus, from the beginning, the enemy is always wicked. The enemy is always furious. The enemy is always angry when he sees the family coming together and celebrating, walking together, having love and rejoicing together. My father, the enemy goes there and he tries to turn one of the, or the other against my God. But I pray this evening, Lord, you are going to touch so many marriages. You are going to deliver so many marriages. It doesn't matter how the enemy is planning. It doesn't matter the propaganda of Satan. Oh. Satan, I want to rebuke you. I command you in the name of Jesus. All your wickedness, all your forces, all your conspiracy and confusion, the power of enemy, the spirit of darkness that the enemy is using, every false uh, uh, accusation and every deception spirit, we in want to command you right now, Jesus. in the name of, of Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, you are defeated, Satan, mm. with all your agenda. Yes. Leave the families of God. In the name of Jesus. We tell you you are defeated the by the blood of Jesus, of Jesus Christ. Yes. Father, that marriage mm. that the enemy has been planning to destroy, Hallelujah. it will never be destroyed. We are Jesus. restoring it, my Father, the by the of blood Jesus. of Jesus Christ, Hallelujah. that that marriage is growing stronger, yes, that Jesus. that marriage is going to be healed, that that marriage Jesus. is going to be restored mm. by the blood of Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. I declare the protection of God yes. upon every marriage, mm. that the men and the, 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 the women mm. and the children of God, yes, they are Lord. going to live 
live in harmony. Yes. They are going to enjoy the oneness of the family. Mm. And no one will separate them again Hallelujah. in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, Father, Lord. I pray, mm. even for the sick people that are watching us right now, yes, wherever Lord. they are, my Father, yes, you are Lord. able to heal them. Hallelujah. You are able to give them good life mm. and good health in their body. Hallelujah. Father, deliver them from that sickness. Yes. Heal them, O oh Lord, mm. that they may receive the new strength, that they may receive the new refreshment in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, my Father, even for the people that are trusting, Lord, to have the place of work, yes. to be employed, my Father, Hallelujah. even for the businessmen and women. Mm. Wherever they are, my Father, yes, remember Lord. them, O oh Lord, mm. and give them their portion in the name, name of, of Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Thank you, my Redeemer, Thank for you, you have done it, uh, my Father, yes, and Lord. there is nothing that will stop your will to be fulfilled. Mm. Let your will be done in as you accomplish your purpose in their life. Hallelujah. In the name of, of our Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, we do pray and even believe. Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, yes, Lord. these are visions of your children. Yes, Lord. They have been written down mm. because they are trusting you to fulfill them. Mighty Jesus. Lord, I pray that every good vision that is in the hearts of men and women, it began by you. Yes, Lord. And therefore, Lord, I commit these visions unto you. Mm. I commit each and everything unto you, my Father. Lord Jesus, I pray that you are going to make a way. You are going to stretch your hand and touch each and every individual who wrote this before you, my Father. That Jesus, you are going to release the spirit of grace upon their life. Hallelujah. You are going to make them conquer every battle and every trial. You are going to make them succeed in all their endeavors. Hallelujah. Father Lord, I lift them in your eyes. Yes, Lord. Hear their cry and answer them, O oh Lord. Yes, Jesus. Touch them with your able hand. Touch them, that Lord. they may be able to excel in everything they are trusting you for. Mighty Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank because you, Jesus. you are going to make it possible, my Father. Yes, Lord. I rebuke you, Satan, who can stand and hinder. I command you, Lucifer, in with all your demons, Jesus. with all your obstacles. Every mountain is ahead of them. Mind we rebuke in the name of Jesus name Christ. Of Jesus. I speak forth breakthrough upon each and every person. Let them receive the grace of making this to become reality. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. So thank you our viewers all over the world. We thank God because of your time that you have taken to receive the message from the man of God. God bless you so much. Till we meet again next Wednesday, I know that the man of God will be again teaching, continuing with the series of the churches. We are yet to know which church will the Lord be speaking about. God is going to bless you. Shalom, shalom, till we meet again next Wednesday. Can we share the grace of God as we part? Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless you.